Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T's study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 168. Number 168, and we are on page number 99. On page 99, you will find the math quiz, which we are referring to as test number 3. There were two other complete tests that we did that appeared in the previous edition, and you will find the solutions to all the problem in those two tests from the 61 through 70, exam number 1, and the test 2 from 71 through 80. If you're interested in solving all the math problems from this book, you will find the solutions to all of them from day 1 through 80. Let's get going. Question number five is what we're going to work on. Question number five and six. Question number five says that we have to find correctly worked out, correctly worked out partial solution, partial solution for the following equation. We told six x plus two x minus 3 is equal to 12x plus 9. Okay, let's get going. See what we have, what we can do here. So, don't look at the answer choices yet. Just start solving it and then eventually we, uh, when, you, when you get to the end, you're just going to match your steps with the steps that they show you. And your job is to pick the one that matches your step. Because it says correctly worked out. Why does it say partial solution? Do they not solve? Do they not go through the entire solution? No, they do not. They do not do the very last step. That's what they mean by partial solution. So look, let's see what we can do. The first thing we have to do is combine the unknowns. Here we see 6x and a 2x, so that becomes 8x minus 3 equals 12x plus 9. 12x plus 9. Now ordinarily, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Ordinarily, the rule, the rule when I say rule, is just a tradition. The tradition dictates, the convention dictates, the norm dictates that we bring all our unknowns to the left hand side. And that's just a norm, it's just a tradition, it's just a, it's just a custom. Nobody's going to come and arrest you. It is not mathematically, mathematically wrong if instead of bringing all the unknowns to the left hand side, if we were to bring all the unknowns to the right hand side. But the tradition dictates that we bring all the unknowns to the left hand side. So we're going to honor the tradition and we're going to subtract 12x from both sides. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. If we were to do that here, this 12x is going to cancel out with this 12x because this is positive and negative. But here we have positive 8x and a negative 12x. We're going to end up with a negative coefficient. We're going to end up with a negative coefficient of the unknown. And that's a bit uh, annoying to deal with, have to deal with negative coefficient because then you're going to end up having to divide by a negative number. We don't want to do that. Besides, there is no there is no solu no solutions there that you see there where we have negative 4x. If you look at the answer choices, the first one ends up with a positive 5x, the last step. The second one ends up with a second one doesn't even finish the whole thing. And then we have 4x and a 4x. There is no negative 4x. What they're doing here, what they're doing here is that instead of bringing instead of bringing 12x to here, they're bringing 8x over there. So this is your positive 12x. And let's bring this 8x over there. How do we do that? We subtract 8x from both sides. Now watch what happens. So here we have positive, positive, positive 12x and a negative 8x. That's going to give us positive 4x. And this positive 8x and a negative 8x are going to cancel out. And that was the whole point. And here we're going to end up with positive 4x. And now, since we are bringing unknown to the right hand side, we must bring the known quantity to the left hand side. So bring the 9 to this side by subtracting 9 from both sides. And again, this positive 9 is going to kill the negative 9. And we're going to end up with negative 3 and negative 9 is going to be negative 12. There you go. That's, that's your answer. That's it. Go through the answer choices and find one answer choice where the last step happens to be 4x equals negative 12. 4x equals negative 12, the very last step is answer choice D. They're not asking us to solve the actual thing, they're just looking for 
part correct steps and these are the correct steps here do you understand let's do the next one number six in question number six in question number six we are told that one step equals two feet and eight inches before we do any work at all before we do any work at all I hope you know your units by now you have to memorize your units and so forth we all know we all know that 12 inches equals one foot and if you were to take a third of that that will be a third of a foot what is the third of a twelve? third of a twelve is four, four inches four inches is a third of a foot and therefore 8 inches therefore this is how we say therefore this means therefore 4 inches equals a third of a foot therefore 8 inches will be 2 third of a foot so that's, thing, that's the first thing we should do here so let's write this as 2 feet and not 8 inches but 2 and 2 third feet before we do any work at all let's just convert that right away so let's say we are done with this part it will make our calculation simpler because that way we don't have to deal with two different units inches and feet so that gets very annoying so we know that one step when I take one step I cover two and two third feet the question is how much distance did I cover if I were to tell you that I walked 4400 steps rather 4500 steps how many feet did I walk how much distance is I covered in feet if I tell you that I took 4500 steps in my walk and I know that each of my step is uh, two and two third feet long. Let's find out, shall we? It's very simple. If one foot is that much, then 4,500 feet must be 4,500. If one foot, if one step rather, if one step is two and two third feet, then 4,500 steps must be. We don't want one. We don't want one step. We want 4,500 steps. Multiply this side by 4,500. We have to multiply this side by 4,500. In other words, if one if one step is two and two third feet, then 4,500 step must be simply 4,500 times two and two third. All we have to do is find out what that is. Find out what that how much does two and two third times 4,500 equal. Let's find out, shall we? This is how we're going to do it. So we have we have two and two third times four thousand five hundred. Okay, watch what happens. We know two times four thousand five hundred is how much? We are doing this thing: two and two third times four thousand five hundred. Let's first do two times four thousand five hundred. Two times four thousand five hundred is nine thousand. That was very easy. And now do two third times four thousand five hundred. Let's do it on the top here. Four thousand five hundred times two and two third. Four thousand times four thousand five hundred times two is nine thousand. And then we have to do four thousand five hundred times two third. In other words, we have to figure out. In other words, we have to figure out two third of four thousand five hundred. Let's do it on the bottom here. We know, we know that a third of four thousand five hundred is simply 1500 because 15 plus 15 is 30 and 30 plus 15 is 45 in other words 1500 plus 1500 is 3000 and 3000 plus 1500 is 4500 hence a third of 4500 is 1500 but we don't want a third we want two thirds we want two thirds I shouldn't have done that because now it seems like it's two times that quantity it is not it's two and two thirds is one quantity do you understand therefore therefore Two third of four thousand five hundred must be three thousand. If a third is four, if a third is fifteen hundred, two third must be three thousand. So we did that. First we did. First we did four thousand five hundred times two, and we got nine thousand. 
And now we find out that 4,500 times 2 thirds is 3,000 right here. Therefore, the answer is I must have walked. I must have walked 12,000 feet. 12,000 feet. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. I know.